Hi, I'm Dave Champlin, a biology professor at the University of Southern Maine, and this video is about transcription regulation of gene expression, and in particular, during cell differentiation. The two pieces of paper I'm using represent two cells from one species of eukaryote. They could be from a human or any other animal, or these two cells could be from any plant, or they could be from a single-celled eukaryote, like the yeast that causes bread to rise, for example. The specific example I'm going to use uh, is a human example. One cell is going to be a muscle cell. The other cell is going to be a muscle precursor called a myoblast. We each inherited DNA from our parents to build our bodies, including creating all our muscles. During the first month of pregnancy in a human, though, there are no muscles. The embryo has the DNA information to make muscles, but it isn't using that information yet. It's in the second month of pregnancy in humans that muscles start to form. These particular images are actually of a mouse embryo, and it's a strain of mice that has had genetic information tagged in its chromosomes so that when muscles form, the cells glow red, and also in this mouse strain, the tendons glow green, and so forth. In the early mouse embryo, none of the cells are glowing. That's because, in general, Early embryos have undifferentiated cells, and then those cells go through a process of differentiation to become differentiated cells like muscle cells, brain cells, kidney cells, skin cells, etc. In other words, the cells that are going to do the various functions of the tissues in the body. Our focus in this video is going to be the DNA in the cells and the DNA is going to be represented by this blue clay. The blue clay represents the familiar double-stranded DNA helix. The blue clay represents a stranded DNA that would be thousands of nucleotides letter, nucleotide letters long, the AGCT nucleotide letters of DNA. In our model, the clay is floppy, and, and that's true for DNA also. Uh, DNA is more like cooked spaghetti than uncooked spaghetti. And you'll see that that's relevant in the second video part of our story. So clay is a good choice for a model of DNA. There are actually two important reasons why I'm making a model uh, out of clay. And uh, the first reason is that this is a physical story. Even though DNA is too small to be seen clearly, even with the most powerful electron microscope, nevertheless, DNA is physical. Stories about DNA are always physical stories. My research includes lots of work with DNA, and I think I like my work partly because I grew up in a small farming town in Minnesota where everything was very physical. Tractors would break and people would fix them. Crops would grow and then get harvested. DNA has that same physical logic that same common sense logic. I feel like I'm a car mechanic who works on physical DNA. I often tell my students that when a car doesn't start, nobody gets out and looks at the tires. DNA has that same physical logic. Here's a quick example. Uh, scientists can take a test tube and they can actually purify the DNA away from any cells and have purified DNA in the test tube. DNA is physical, and it is able to be physically isolated away from all the other molecules of life. In the test tube, scientists can study this physical DNA. Then they can, they can identify physical mutations that have occurred to the DNA. They can read the physical DNA sequence, which is the pattern of AGCT letters. They can compare that sequence between two people or between any species, and they can work with this physical DNA. Here's a dramatic example. and. Uh, in a test tube, scientists can physically cut DNA in a specific location, and then they can swap DNA between species. DNA has the same chemical structure in every species and the same AGCT nucleotide letters. The difference between species is in the sequence, the pattern of the AGCT nucleotide letters. Um, in this example, I've actually taken the mouse DNA and glued onto it a green strand of DNA that's actually from a jellyfish. This DNA can then be placed back inside a living cell and studied. 
in this example actually uh, is common uh, the seen so for example in just about any pet store now there are some fish that are referred to as glowfish and those glowfish have this jellyfish gene incorporated into their chromosomes they inherited that from their parents and they'll send that glowing gene on to any offspring the jellyfish gene is called GFP and when it gets expressed into proteins it's actually the protein that glows in fact this mouse strain carries a variety of versions of the GFP gene that glow these different colors and the jellyfish gene is present the DNA is present in the early mouse embryo but it's not glowing because it's the protein GFP product that glows and during differentiation that protein gets made and the cells glow these various colors the second reason I'm using clay in this work is because research on how students learn has shown that a powerful way for students to learn science concepts is to use physical models so I'm working with clay to encourage you to build models yourself using paper paint colored pencils clay and then label those to help you learn the physical concepts found in science the most important concept I'm teaching here is actually shown already and that is during cell differentiation in general the DNA doesn't change we'll see in an uh, optional video that there's one important exception to that and it's something called DNA methylation but certainly the DNA sequence doesn't change the AGCT letters stay the same as muscle cells differentiate we're going to be studying an important gene that's essential for muscle differentiation called the myogenin gene and the myogenin gene doesn't change genes don't change genes are made of DNA the DNA sequence doesn't change genes don't change this is true for differentiation in general so for example in a human muscle cell or a human liver cell or a human brain cell as differentiation occurs the DNA sequence doesn't change uh, this concept is actually a very general concept and the general concept is that that all the cells with very rare exceptions have all the genes needed needed to make the whole organism that concept is called genomic equivalence and it means that each cell has the whole genome each muscle cell each human brain cell human liver cell have the whole gene the whole genome present um, that's true for all animals and it's true for all plants as well so when we look at plants the plant root cell and the plant leaf cell have genomic equivalents the plant root cell has all the genes to make a leaf it's just not using all that information that's true in other examples as well so for example in uh, cells treated with medicine the cells with no medicine and the cells with medicine have the same DNA sequence it doesn't change even though medicine can have dramatic effects on a cell the, the DNA information doesn't change there are some important exceptions to that so for example if we compare a normal cell with a cancerous cell the cell has become cancerous because there have been changes mutations have occurred in the DNA and it's true that during our lives there will be a small number of random and rare mutations that occur in our cells but in general we are born with the same DNA we'll have for our entire life the baby the teen the adult all have the same DNA information the undifferentiated cell and the differentiated cell have that same information the second video is going to describe what does change during cell differentiation and just to finish off this video I'm going to add a couple more terms of uh, the DNA story and they are that the blue clay includes some additional colors let me just switch this back to the mouse DNA so we have these additional colors and they mark parts of the DNA sequence that are important in the myogenin gene and any other gene one part is the yellow that's the transcription unit and 
the transcription unit in a gene that codes for a protein, like the myogenin gene, also includes a portion that's called the coding region. In addition to that, there is a regulatory region right next to the transcription unit called the promoter, and there's a region that's far away from the transcription unit called the enhancer. I put these in because these are all terms for the DNA sequence, uh, and the DNA doesn't change, so that these also don't change. So, for example, during cell differentiation, the enhancer doesn't change, the promoter doesn't change, and so forth. The genes don't change, with the important exception of DNA methylation, and the DNA sequence stays the same. We'll find out in the second video what does change during cell differentiation.